Meeting for December 17th, 2019. At this time, Mayor Michael Taylor is detained. He will be here later. Uh, could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please bless our elected officials. Grant them courage and wisdom to do what is right for all citizens. Amen. 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 Ms. Riska, could we please have the roll call? Mayor Taylor, Mrs. Saraski. Here. Mrs. Koski. Present. Mr. Radke. Present. Mrs. Schmidt. Present. Mrs. Yanez. <clears throat> here. Mrs. Zarko. Present. Okay, all but Mayor Taylor is here. He shall be coming soon. And now if I could please have the approval of the agenda. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> Mrs. Koski. Move to approve the agenda. Support. We have a motion and support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next, we have the report from our city manager, Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Surowski. Uh, the mayor asked that I talk very slow in my report so Please that he it. doesn't <laughs> miss a good portion of the meeting. So I'm going to go real slow. Thank you. Anyhow, uh, just a uh, quick update on some of the um, uh, closures regarding the holiday uh, coming up. In observance of the Christmas holiday, city offices will be closed on Tuesday, the 24th and the 25th, and then the following week on the 31st and January 1st. Um, the refuse collection, however, will be delayed only one day each of those weeks. So. On the 25th, there'll be no collection, and it'll be delayed one day uh, from then, and Fridays will be collected on Saturday, and a repeat for the following week. Also, I wanted to uh, remind everyone that for the 27th year, the city's Recycling Christmas Tree Program is uh, will be underway after the holidays. You can leave your trees at the curb on your normal trash day, of course, um, you know, you have to make sure you remove everything from the tree and not have it wrapped in any sort of plastic or anything. But we will uh, collect that. The trees will be chipped, and it's an environmentally friendly way to save some precious space in our landfills. Uh, so please take note of that. And also, I wanted to give just a little update on all that our organization has done to help those in need over the past uh, month or so during this holiday season. Uh, this year, close to 380 families in Sterling Heights and surrounding communities received assistance through the city's holiday assistance program. 24 local organizations as well as individuals participated through sponsorships of local families. The city is still receiving calls from local businesses asking how they can help. Uh, so we obviously have a very generous uh, business base in the community. We're very grateful for that. And I wanted to uh, take this moment to commend our community relations staff who coordinate this program every year with the schools and churches and others involved, including businesses. Uh, they do a great job, and I appreciate their good work. And also the 21st annual Cops and Kids event was held on Saturday, December 7th at the 16-mile uh, Dequinder Target. Uh, this annual event is sponsored by the Sterling Heights FOP Lodge, the Sterling Heights Police Department, and of course Target. This year, 30 officers volunteered their time to help, help each child spend $120 on toys, clothing, and gifts for their families. Retired Sterling Heights Police Officer Sergeant Randy DePriest and Detective Margaret Wimple have been organizing this fantastic event for the past 20 years, helping over a 1,000 uh, children uh, enjoy a very special day. So uh, a shout out to uh, both of them for their good work with this program. And the Department of Public Works held their annual Ken Stempowski Memorial Food Drive. This year, donations included, once again, non-perishable food items, monetary donations, and 20 frozen tur turkeys from Red Craft in Sterling Heights. The food will be delivered to the Macomb Pantry where they'll then distribute to another, a number of other uh, pantries throughout the area, uh, serving almost 500 people uh, a day uh, through all the various pantries. 
and numerous departments and offices throughout the organization also participated by adopting uh, kids and families uh, to brighten their holidays. And I'm very uh, proud of our entire city team for all the good work they've done during the holiday <coughs> season. And also uh, the city council members who have uh, contributed and helped fund um, equipment in the new teen center that's soon gonna be opening up. And uh, we appreciate their generosity as well. And moving on to another topic, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to talk about a really uh, what we believe is a, a very uh, helpful and interesting training program. Uh, we're very grateful that we're able to get through this training and I'd like to draw your attention to the screen if I could. And I'm gonna walk through this. Uh, some of you may have heard about it. It's called Lean Six Sigma. Uh, if you've been in the manufacturing business over the years, uh, that's where this started uh, decades ago, but is now transcended uh, across all sorts of uh, sectors in our economy, including government. So Lean Six Sigma is a method professionals use to streamline processes by eliminating waste while efficiently solving problems. The Lean Six Sig Sigma method relies on a collaborative team effort and combines lean business lean innovativeness and Six Sigma to eliminate uh, eight kinds of waste. And they include defects. Believe it or not, whatever job you're in, whether it's local government, retail, manufacturing, engineering, or the like, there's defects in all of our jobs. And this Lean Six Sigma program helps to identify those and to eliminate them. And all of that uh, results in all sorts of other waste, including waiting and not using talent appropriately, wasting transportation resources, wasting inventory, needless motion, <coughs> extra processing, and so on. Although the roots of Lean Six Sigma are in the manufacturing uh, sector, as I mentioned, it has permeated now all sorts of uh, sectors of, of business. And uh, Sterling Heights, while we're not the first, uh, we're certainly on the cutting edge of, of this training uh, being deployed now throughout the organization. So it's all about continuous improvement. Uh, we want to improve processes that are not working, which are causing employee frustration, and ultimately, which uh, end up affecting our customers, uh, businesses, and and residents alike. So we want to be able to do all that we can to improve under the continuous improvement philosophy and ultimately improve the service to uh, residents and businesses. There's uh, various uh, certifications, including white belt, yellow belt, green belt, black belt, master belt, and champion. And we have uh, a number of employees that are going through some of these uh, classifications, not all of them, uh, so far, in total, Sterling Heights staff has spent uh, over 1,300 hours in Lean Six Sigma training. And I'm not going to read through all the names, but I wanted uh, some employees who may be watching to see their names on the screen because uh, they did put a lot of time and effort into this. Uh, the White Belt graduates uh, just went through a, c a ceremony at M Macomb Community College uh, last week, and it was um, a really a great time to showcase their, their great work. And uh, the idea behind the training too is that each group had to come up with a process, a specific process in their office or their department that they had to improve. So they would go back after the training and then change that process in some way to make it more effective, more efficient, less wasteful, and so on. So you can see uh, some of the projects here, uh, streamlining the city development process. Uh, now this is very involved, uh, but ultimately this is gonna have an impact on, on businesses and residents who need a permit of one sort or another. Uh, streamlining and, and improving the warrant arrest report process. Cutting down customer response lead time. <clears throat> improved processing of essential uh, service assessments, limiting library lag time, checking out material, and so on. Uh, so you can see uh, the idea is to then go back into your department, implement these changes so others can see 
the benefit of Lean Six Sigma. At our graduation ceremony, we had a number of testimonials from employees. And this was our first graduating class of Lean Six Sigma. Uh, we really appreciate the Mayor and City Council's support of this training. It's just one small component, but a very important component of training offered what, under what's called the Sterling U or Sterling University. Uh, so that in and of itself is a very unique brand uh, that offers up training to employees all across the organization in all sorts of areas, uh, not just Lean Six Sigma. So I won't bore you with any more of that, but I wanted to uh, uh, certainly give credit to everyone who was involved with that training. And I also, at this time, Mayor Pro Tem Sarowski would like to call on our uh, Parks and Recreation Director, Kyle Langloy, to give an update on the exciting project across the street that soon will be opening. Okay, Mr. Langloy. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Sarowski, members of council, and all gathered here tonight. It's hard to believe, but we are exactly two months away from receiving the keys to our new community center, two months from today. And while we continue to update everybody on social media, uh, we wanted to share a quick snapshot of what is being done as we speak, as well as publicly address some of the common questions that we continue to see pop up on social media and again in conversation. Um, as a quick note, crews are working seven days a week right now, um, almost 18 hours a day, different shifts to try and uh, make sure that we hit our timeline on this. And I'm uh, certainly I'm confident that we will hit our timeline to get our keys and I'll share some information about a grand opening a little bit later in my presentation. A little photo disclaimer, um, I'm very grateful for uh, Marissa Russo, who's here from Community Relations, who took some of these photos uh, uh, on our behalf, but we are kind of in photography purgatory, if you will, at the uh, community center. There is not very good angles to take and there's just a lot of drywall and dust. So it's not great to, to see, but happy to show where the progress is right now when we're expecting to see a lot of the finishes starting to take shape here in the next couple of weeks. So that will certainly make for more riveting photos, which we will share on social media as they come along. Uh, first, as, as, as we get into this too, I'd like to identify an important distinction with our community center and with this facility and that it is a community center, not specifically a recreation center. And so a lot of people might not uh, grasp what the difference is, um, but I'm gonna try and explain that a little bit here. So the building was designed to be a resource for our community as a whole and to fill in uh, the facility gap that we had uh, in relation to our service delivery. So not specifically about uh, any one activity or any one type of activities, but a facility that we needed to properly deliver the services that we do. Uh, this building design allows us to carry out our core mission of our department, which is to provide high quality programs uh, to our residents at a great value. And that's something that our department has been doing now for over 50 years. Uh, in essence, this building um, gives us the opportunity to house under one roof almost all of our programs that we have that have been spread throughout the city in different locations, uh, schools, buildings, uh, fields, uh, a lot of different areas. We can bring it under one roof, making it more efficient, which really is a, a great example of uh, Lean Six Sigma um, by way of uh, efficiency. Um, conversely, in their purest sense, uh, I truly believe that recreation centers are operated more like private health clubs. Uh, they have the amenities that are more specific to health club and they're more active uh, recreation type facilities such as um, fitness clubs, uh, fitness facilities, and also those recreation centers often come with a different revenue model than what we're looking at here with our community center. So uh, after boring you with that, um, some of you may be asking, well, what can we expect with our new community center when this building opens? So I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a uh, step-by-step. So first, you will see an aesthetically pleasing comfortable and welcoming building inside and out. This is uh, taken from a few weeks ago now as there's been a lot of landscaping that has taken place since, um, but there's going to be places to sit, places to store items, places to gather, places to admire the architecture and the art of the building. In addition, the community center uh, brings us for the first time since August 2017 back to centrally located uh, area of the city in the city center complex so our recreation team and administration will be here conveniently located for resident convenience. The community center is going to house five dance and fitness studios. This is a picture of one of the dance studios right now. 
um, that will not only support our existing Sterling Stars Dance Program, which has over 300 dancers in it, but it will also uh, cover our adult fitness classes too. These dance studios and fitness studios will allow us to expand on our offerings, making our lineup more diverse than ever before. These same rooms will also house some of our largest attended senior classes, like Tai Chi, as you see here, which has outgrown our available spaces at the Senior Center. <clears throat> An early childhood room uh, will be at the Community Center to expose our youngest participants and families to the benefits of parks and recreation including a secured toddler-aged play structure that is perfect for ages two to five right outside the front door. Residents can expect to see evening classes being offered as well, something that has never been done before to my knowledge and certainly not within the last 15 years. The community center will have a teen room. The teen room uh, is designed to give an underserved population a place to go and be themselves. This room will encompass study areas, social areas, and a variety of gaming areas both new and retro on a drop-in basis. New teen programs and summer camps will take shape as well. And we have already discussed with the library more opportunities to expand our collaboration efforts. <laughs> the community center will house a seminar room to host community meetings, neighborhood association meetings, youth athletic league meetings, and internal department trainings, including election training, and summer camp orientation. This will help take the strain off of areas in the city, in city hall, the library, and school district buildings that are currently being used. The community center will have a community room that will host our city's major indoor special events, including the cultural exchange, healthy living expo, coffee house concerts, <coughs> excuse me, senior center holiday parties, adaptive recreation dances, as well as house absentee ballot processing on all election days. This area can also be rented by Sterling Heights residents, businesses, and community groups only for low-key functions such as business meetings, wedding and baby showers, funeral wakes, and the like. The community center will have two high school-sized gyms that will host existing programs like baton classes, men's gym, adaptive basketball, senior drop and pickleball, which outgrew the senior center about two weeks after we opened, adaptive recreation day camp, and games for the Sterling Heights Basketball Club, while also, also allowing us space for new drop-in programs, adult athletic leagues, and so much more. Last but certainly not least is an indoor track that measures approximately one-tenth of a mile for anyone looking to achieve their personal fitness goals and are looking for a climate-controlled space to walk or run when the weather turns for the worse. So as you can see, we are excited to have a building that will meet the needs of our department in its current capacity and allow us to expand with even more programs and services to our residents. I also want to go on record saying that I am aware of the commentary on social media and in day-to-day -day conversation regarding our lack of a pool that's in this facility and lack of a fitness center. And I'm aware of the disappointment that comes uh, and is related to those omissions. And I understand those disappointments as well. Um, always happy to go into more detail with people because I do believe that the more we can um, educate everybody as to why we made the decisions we made um, I'm happy to have those conversations on a one-on-one -on -one basis with anybody I'm certainly happy to talk about that a little bit more tonight as well in regards to both amenities the primary reason for not including these items was available land space something that we've talked about before um, this is the reason why this these two amenities were not in our plan from the start and why we were able to work out a deal with the city of Warren so that way we can have uh, the ability for our residents to um, enjoy a pool and a fitness center at resident and good resident rates. Um, including these features would have also required us to renovate the current recreation center in Dodge Park, um, which as you can see today, uh, that would have you know, made for a very different look and function of the park. Secondarily, adding these features um, would have cost the residents a significant amount of additional money in this uh, in this millage uh, both on their taxes and really to use the center forevermore uh, the build-out cost we expect would have been approximately 15 to 20 million dollars more to uh, um, add a pool and renovate the recreation center in Dodge Park and our operation cost would have doubled as well with additional staff and running pools um, also having these features would have moved us from a programming based model um, which costs our residents uh, no additional dollars over the fee for programs that they participate in and would have moved us to a membership-based model 
uh, which would have uh, really provided that people would have had to pay annual memberships in the ballpark of around $750 per year. So it would not have been free if we would have had a pool or a fitness center, we would have had to change our funding model and our revenue model. And that is over and above the taxes that are already paid. I um, also want to make sure I mention too, as we talk through some of these items, it's important to think about the trends in our community and what's happening all around uh, our community. When we look at pools, um, it's no secret that a few years ago, our partners, Utica Schools, closed two of their pools because it just wasn't financially feasible to keep them open. They're now gymnasiums. Um, both Warren and Macomb Townships recently sunk hundreds of thousands of dollars into their pool spaces as well. All things that we took into consideration. Uh, when you look at fitness centers too, uh, just performing a quick Google search, we find that there's well over a dozen fitness and health clubs in Sterling Heights in directly to the north and south of us in uh, Shelby Township in Warren, and that doesn't include Clinton Township, Rochester, Troy, and so on and so forth. So there's everything from Planet Fitness on the low end to Lifetime Fitness on the high end, everything in between, and we still have more complexes being built um, by the day, as we know, LA Fitness is coming into town again, another one at 16 in Van Dyke. So the market's very saturated, specialized. It is an area that we don't have expertise in. I thought we would probably uh, run into a losing venture if we went into that direction. Uh, in closing though, um, I can say that I understand again the disappointment that some people have, but more importantly, I can say that we made decisions and found alternate solutions that are truly in the best interest find best financial interest of our residents in the city as a whole. I confidently stand by that sentiment today as I did over four years ago. Also what remains true is we have some great things going on here in Sterling Heights. There's a lot of people that um, are very jealous of what we have going on here and I'm happy to say that we're at the forefront of parks and recreation and quality of life. Also want to say too that just because our plan right now is what it is doesn't mean that the door is closed on future parks and recreation and quality of life initiatives in the city of Sterling Heights. I want to thank the council for allowing me this time to share uh, this update and would be happy to uh, tour each and every one of you through the community center over the next couple weeks as we get closer to completion. Also want to make sure I mention that uh, we do have February 29th, which is Saturday, February 29th, Leap Day as our grand opening day for the new community center. We invite all of our residents, city council and uh, other dignitaries out to enjoy that day. More information will be coming out through our uh, website and on social media. Um, we found that there's no more fitting day to celebrate a once in a lifetime building than to have it on a once in a four year kind of a day. So mm -hmm. again, I thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions if uh, anybody has them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Langlois. And we would like to recognize the mayor who has now joined us. So I turn over the meeting to him, Mayor Taylor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sarowski. And my apologies for being late, but I thank you very much for filling in for me. Uh, I was uh, trying to see my daughter's Christmas concert tonight started at 6.30, so I uh, appreciate your indulgence in letting me be just a few minutes late tonight. So uh, with that, I think we had the presentation. I walked in on the middle of it, so I apologize, Mr. Langloy. But, Council, is there anyone that has any questions for Mr. Langloy regarding the uh, community center update? Actually, I do, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, thank you, Mayor Taylor. May Mr. Langley, what do we, so we are now going to be able to rent some of this space as a, as a resident. What about the catering? Do we, or are we going to have in-house catering? Is it only going to be brought in where we have to bring in our own? How would that work? Mr. Langley. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem uh, great question. Uh, we are currently working on um, vetting um, some caterers for the facility. We want to try and streamline that process. Um, most importantly, it's important to make sure that whoever is providing food is health department certified and is, you know, able to provide said food. We do not have facilities in the building uh, to cater ourselves or to have a caterer work out of our kitchen. So any caterer that's going to bring food in is going to have to be self-sufficient to bring everything in, keep it warm and provide, you know, the whole setup from start to finish. Thank you. Got no further questions. All right, council, anyone else? Mr. Langley, if not, thank you, Mr. Langley, Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you might have noticed on the consent agenda this evening, there is a new uh, technology being deployed by the fire department. And with us this evening is a fire chief who's gonna talk a little bit about this really neat technology. Thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Good evening, Mayor Taylor, members of council, uh, Mr. Kashupski, and any residents here are watching. Um, 
This evening, later this evening, I'm going to be presenting the 20th survival coin, which is another great example of teamwork. And another example of teamwork is item C on the consent agenda, which is where city council and the residents support the fire department with the implementation of, of technologies and different tools for us to be successful in our job. And that uh, item is to purchase six uh, Stryker Lucas III chest compression machines. So several years ago, we tested one of these. We put them on our rescue truck, which responds to all CPRs. And it got uh, glowing reviews from all the firefighters. They wanted these things as quickly as we could. Uh, it's such a hefty price tag. We did our due diligence over the years and went through two different AFG grants that were unsuccessful and even attempted a grant through the uh, firehouse subs that was unsuccessful. So uh, it was in the capital budget, and now the city is purchasing these excellent pieces of equipment for us. Uh, we're going to continue to pursue grants to get them on all the fire engines because these will be on the ambulances and one on the rescue truck. Uh, but I'd like to give you a couple of examples of what this machine does. And there's a brief video right here that I'll go to. So these uh, mechanical CPR devices are both good for patient outcome and good for the, the firefighters and the first responders. <coughs> uh, and a couple examples of that. Uh, it's quality CPR. It's continual, nonstop, uh, the perfect amount of compressions, the per perfect depth of compressions. And it has been tested to be uh, um, to show that significant increase in CPR. Um, not only that, um, it's it helps us with long-term care on the, the ride to the hospital and there's no interruptions. And as you saw in the, in the video, when you carry people down the stairs during CPR, CPR stops because um, it can't be continued in those situations. So it's great for the patient, and uh, we should see an increase in outcomes, which are already very successful here in the city of Sterling Heights, as, as our Survivor Coin program will show you. But it's also safe on the first responders. Uh, CPR isn't like you see on TV where everything's in pristine situations. So our firefighters are usually in vicarious situations, trying to do chest compressions, uh, back injuries, and things like that are common in, in CPRs and other medical uh, emergencies like that. And it also helps us uh, in, increase our, our uh, ability to bring people uh, to the hospital in a, in a better sense of, uh, of recovery. So uh, with that, um, if you'd like to direct the uh, camera to the front thing, Chief Miller is going to uh, display ours that we have, uh, one of the ones that we're going to be getting um, with this purchase that we should have by the beginning of the year. It actually will increase with cardiac output as it increases the pressure from continuous CPR. And our mannequin, turn it on, it's too light here, it actually shows the blood flow to the head. Um, so you can see the cardiac perfusion. Do medical care and treatment such as airway management, IV, or medication administration. And it also allows us to start it back up but because it's loud. It will record everything that happens with it, and we can use that for some data analysis on our own patient care and outcome. So it's a very useful piece of equipment. It doesn't look like it will fit everybody, but it will. It's more based on bone density versus body mass. 
So there's a wide variety of uh, patients that this will accommodate. So, any questions? Council, anyone, any questions? Mrs. Zarco. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. My question is, is this battery operated? Oh, through the chair to whoever wants to answer my question. <laughs> battery operated, I take it? It is battery operated. Uh, and just like everything we do, we plan for different contingencies. So it comes with two batteries and it comes with a wall outlet that we can use in a house for extended period of times. And then it also comes with another adapter so that we can plug it in in the ambulances and transport. So really this will allow for continuous CPR until it's deemed necessary to stop it, whether it's a change of patient condition or at the directions of a physician. Thank you, that's my only question. Anyone else, counsel? Thank you very much, uh, Assistant Chief Miller. And Chief, anything else? That's it. All right, thank you. Mayor, that concludes my report this evening. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Vanderpool. Move on to the next item on our agenda, which is a presentation. This is a presentation of the 20th recipient of the Sterling Heights Fire Department survival coin. We have a presentation from our Fire Chief, Chris Martin, Chief Martin. Thank you again, Mayor Taylor, members of Council, Mr. Vanderpool, Mr. Kaszewski. As I mentioned earlier, tonight uh, is our number 20th uh, survivor coin. So it's kind of a, kind of a benchmark there. Uh, even though uh, we've had 69 candidates for survivor coin, uh, that's 69 people who suffered a cardiac arrest and walked out of the hospital without neurological deficit since July the 1st of 2013. Uh, this will be the 20th today that came to become a survivor coin recipient. Uh, this is also one that has been a while. Uh, this actually occurred on September the 19th of 2018. Mm -hmm. And so Mr. Daryl Morley was uh, traveling southbound on Shaner, just north of 15 Mile, and suffered a medical emergency and veered off the road and ran into a tree. It was not a traumatic accident, so it wasn't the, the running into the tree that caused the problem. It was the, the medical emergency or the cardiac arrest that he suffered uh, that caused him to go off the roadway. Uh, there was a doctor in the CVS that we have still not been able to identify, but he witnessed this uh, and he jumped into action, uh, left the CVS uh, and removed Mr. Morley from the car and started CPR. He also had uh, helps from our own citizens on patrol, Dino Spadafor, until Engine 4 arrived. Engine 4 at the time had Captain Rich Werbeck, who is now retired, uh, Lieutenant Cuny, and Sergeant Watson, who took over patient care and started CPR. Squad 2 arrived with firefighters Stephen Kloos and Eric Refnes, and then Rescue 1 arrived with Captain Lulick and uh, Lieutenant Vergowan, also with the assistance of uh, Battalion <clears throat> Chief Doherty. So over the next 25 minutes, a lot of things occurred. Uh, they did two defibrillations in the first few minutes, and those defibrillations resulted in electrical impulses being restored to the heart, but no pulse. So they had to continue with CPR and give cardiac meds at that time, and that resulted in some activity back to the heart, which then again resulted in two defibrillations. And after the fourth defibrillation and a lot of uh, medical care, um, Mr. Morley's heart was restored with pulse. He was loaded in the ambulance and uh, rushed to St. John Macomb, and on the way to St. John Macomb, he once again uh, lost his heartbeat, and the, the firefighter medics began CPR and began uh, more medicine uh, delivery that resulted in Mr. Morley's heart uh, beating when they dropped him off the emergency room. Uh, at that point, uh, the firefighters, uh, we kind of lost track of Mr. Morley uh, because uh, we didn't think he was doing that good at the time. And in fact, when the accident happened, it was very close to uh, Councilwoman Barb Ziarko's house, and uh, she was there and witnessed the whole thing. So uh, she's been asking where Mr. Morley has been for the last uh, year and a half, so I'm glad we could finally deliver him uh, <laughs> to, to see you here. So without uh, further ado, I'd like to bring up Mr. Morley and Lieutenant Jeff Vergowan to present the survivor coin. Mm -hmm. to thank these gentlemen for uh, their effort. Without them, I wouldn't be standing here talk, speaking with you guys. I mean, I made a list of all the EMT guys, but I can't pronounce all their names, so I'm not <laughs> even trying. But um, you, you really don't re appreciate how much uh, value there is to life until you've actually gone through the door. And the fact that they had to uh, uh, hit me four times with the, uh, the paddles, I guess, they never gave up on me, which I so appreciate. My wife appreciates it. My family appreciates it. Um, all I can say is thank you so much, you guys. It was just absolutely a great effort on your part. Thank you.
again, is this an example of teamwork? I'd like to invite up Mr. Uh, Bob Dickerson from St. John Macomb or Ascension Health Macomb uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Chief Martin, uh, and good evening, everyone. I just wanted to, um, again, congratulate all of the providers and also the responders that were part of this great care. This, uh, these guys do this every day from point of 911 through point of discharge. Um, what a great time of year, especially to celebrate uh, something like this. Mr. Morley, I know you had a very extensive um, stay in the hospital. Uh, it was uh, very long and then post care also. And I just wanted to say to you, you are truly a fighter and a survivor. And what a great time of year with the support of your family to um, celebrate that. So thank you. All right, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mayor, before I turn it over to you, I want to uh, let you know that we're working on number 21. Hopefully we can have it at a January meeting. Uh, but we really see had a successful uh, teamwork effort at the Planet Fitness at 15 in Shaner, where a, uh, a physician assistant from Mr. Dickerson's hospital was witnessed a cardiac arrest, took the AED off the wall at the Planet Fitness, and actually had the patient uh, with a pulse before Engine 4 got there. So we hope to have that, uh, that great story uh, in next month's council meeting. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Mayor. Busy corner, 15 and Shaner, a lot going on there. <laughs> thank you, and uh, thank you for uh, the fire department for being here. Council, I'll open it up. Is there anyone that has any questions or want to make any comments about this 20th uh, survival coin? Mayor Taylor. Mayor Pro Tem Sorowski. Well, I want to congratulate Mr. Morley. I, uh, as a nurse myself, being defibrillated four times is unusual. They usually, the third time is usually third, three strikes and you're out. So you, congratulations. I'm glad that you are a fighter and you have survived. It is a wonderful testament to both our firefighters, police officers that were also there, I'm sure, and the, the team at St. John, which is my first original hospital in Michigan that I worked at. So I have a little special part in my heart for them as well. And congratulations and thank you all for doing such a great job. Council, anyone else? Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Zarko, sorry. That's okay. You were late, too. So. <laughs> um, I have to tell you, Mr. Morley, I remember that day. I was actually coming home from an errand, and I was actually turning. I was um, eastbound, and then I turned north on, on to 15 Mile, and, and I saw all of our equipment there. This was the first thing that I saw. So the, And then the pole on the ground, not realizing that I think the pole actually hit another car, like it fell on the back end of somebody else's car. Um, so then as I, you, I could see everything from where I live, I'm right across the street and, and the activity that was going on, and um, it was the efficiency. I mean, all of our employees were where they needed, you know, where they needed to be there. They were in the right place at the right time. And, and we talk about this all the time, but when you actually witness it, it, it really brings everything to home, how important it is and, and how um, well educated our, our, our fire department is, our police department, um, our, and our CERT members. And um, so, you know, it, it, when you see it all, it, it's worth it. It really is worth it. And to see you walk in today, um, is it's really joyful and I have to say I kept asking um, Chief Martin if he had heard anything about you do you know anything do you know anything didn't and it was like every time I saw the pole on the ground I thought about it and I'd ask him again because so as long as the pole was on the ground I was asking about you and then they put the pole up <laughs> and we kind of forgot about it <laughs> but thank you for being here uh, I wish you well Merry Christmas I mean I'm sure you're having a happy holiday so um, that's that's all I have to say all right, thank you, Ms. Sarko. Anyone else, Council? Just another uh, great job by the entire team. Uh, you said the word teamwork a few times tonight, Chief, and that's what it is. So, Mr. Morley, it's, uh, it's great to have you here, and it's great to have the uh, tremendous fire department that we have, police department, our dispatchers, and the local hospitals that, uh, that take over the care after our fire department uh, starts it. So, a, a big great, uh, a big team effort and a great job for everyone involved. One more big round of applause. So with that, Chief, we have another presentation tonight. We do have another presentation tonight. <laughs> do I? Yes. <laughs> another uh, swearing in. So I'll hand it back over to you, Chief Martin. 
Good evening again, Mayor Taylor, members of council. I'm uh, pleased to uh, present to you two more, or two of the newest members of, of this great team that we've talked about so many times tonight. Uh, to my immediate right is Joshua Daly. He's 34 years old. He grew up in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Michigan, where he attended South Area High School. He wanted to move to the warmer climate of Macomb County, so here he is. Uh, he's got a lot of family in the crowd tonight, including uh, his son, Luca, and his daughter, Addison, who uh, I think we've heard Addison a little bit tonight. She's happy to be here as well, as well as his girlfriend. He attended Macomb Community College uh, and recently attained his uh, medic license, and this is going to be his first job in the fire EMS field. Next to him is uh, Michael Palmasano. He's 27 years old. He grew up mostly in Macomb Township, and he graduated from Dakota High School. He went to the Fire Academy at Macomb uh, Community College. He attended uh, Dorsey Business School in Madison Heights to get his medic uh, license. His uh, previous two years was, was with Detroit EMS, and four years prior to that uh, was with Suburban EMS. So, um, Mayor, if you'd let me to, I'd like to uh, bring them over here and swear them in. So. Right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. Uh, Joshua Daly. I'm Michael Palmasano. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Sterling Heights City Charter. And the Sterling Heights City Charter. That I will comply with the rules and regulations of the Sterling Heights Fire Department. That I will comply with the rules and regulations of the Sterling Heights Fire Department. And I will discharge the duties of my office to the best of my ability. I'll discharge you to my office to the best of my ability. Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> Mayor, Council, if you'd like to come Absolutely. congratulate these young men. Taylor, I'm going to turn the floor over to Josh. He's got a few words to say. Okay. okay. Mayor, Council, thank you very much for your time this evening. Mm -hmm. I just want to express my, my gratitude for the opportunity to not only start, I hope to finish my career serving the wonderful city of Sterling Heights. Thank you again. Thank you. Those are all the right things. Mm -hmm. Michael, anything uh, to add? <laughs> Getting there. Well, what he said. Uh, <laughs> um, I've, uh, I've spent the last several years working towards this so i'm also very excited to be here uh, i went through many interviews this year and i'm just excited to be at one of the best fire departments and cities in the state of michigan you guys have a very good reputation here thank you all right well thank you, oh, thank, you. thank you it's it's your reputation now and <laughs> so <we're, laughs> so good luck uh, chief anything else? i'll turn it over to you mayor okay uh council any comments any questions anybody if not uh, we just uh you know i i mean that uh, jokingly, but also sincerely, is that we have this great reputation. We've had a lot of uh, people come through this department and they continue to maintain it. It's whether it's our police department, our fire department, or any of our other city departments, our DPW, city hall, and hopefully the same uh, with our city council here is that we expect a lot because we've, we've uh, just grown accustomed to that. And the residents and citizens of Sterling Heights have too. So uh, we, we are very proud to have you. Uh, we wish you Godspeed. Good luck out there. Keep us safe. Keep yourself safe. And uh, thank you for your service to this great city. So uh, congratulations. I know you guys got some family family here. Maybe you'll go celebrate. So one more round of applause. And Chief, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. All right. We will move on to the next item on our agenda tonight, which is an ordinance introduction. And this is to introduce the First Amendment to the Appropriations Ordinance for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. We have a presentation from our Finance and Budget Director, Jennifer Varney. Mrs. Varney. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Mr. Vanderpool, and Mr. Kaszubski. 
I'm here tonight to introduce the first amendment to the appropriations ordinance. The budget is normally amended twice each year, once in December and once towards the end of the fiscal year. This amendment primarily carries forward unspent funding for projects that were approved in a prior year, but were not completed until this year. It also recognizes new grants and items that have come before council since the budget was adopted. In the general fund, the budget contributes 830,000 to fund balance reserves. Now this contribution decreased about 182,000 from the original budget due to the carry forward of the prior year unspent encumbrances, the cost of supplemental snow services and increases to the budget for the 2020 census campaign and the fire staffing study. In the other city funds, the budget was adjusted by 20.8 million. But again, this is primarily carrying forward funds from previously approved projects. Mm -hmm. 8.1 million is for unspent road projects from last year, including the reconstruction of Merrill Road, 19 Mile, and Utica Road. 2.3 million is to reappropriate funds for parks improvements related to recreating recreation. 1.3 million is to reappropriate projects for the local development finance authority. And this includes sectional concrete repair for Sterling Drive and signage for Center Drive and Sterling Ponds. And finally, a little over $9 million is to reappropriate unspent capital project funds. And this includes funds for the construction of the new DPW facility, the city sidewalk gap program and repair program, as well as the carry forward of funds for the city campus renovations. All of the budget amendments are detailed in the provided council packet. Mr. Mayor, this is the first reading of this ordinance, which is scheduled for adoption at the January 7th meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Varney. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Not council, we need a motion. Mayor, 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 Ta Mary, uh, Mayor Taylor. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Arco. Resolved to introduce the first amendment to the appropriations ordinance for the 2019-20 fiscal year. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion, uh, Ms. Zarko? No, I think it was um, explained very well to us. Council, anyone else? Neither. With no further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Varney. <laughs> Next item on our agenda tonight is the consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on any item on tonight's consent agenda? Mr. Shea? speak on uh, consent agenda C, the Lucas 3 chest compression system for Strong Ice Fire Department. I like the presentation tonight and I see the cost is $98,000 and change. The question I have for the city, what is the plan of how many do they want to buy for the, for the community? That's the only question I have. I like the idea that you have them and everything. I just was curious how many, because uh, four or five fire stations, and I don't know how many trucks you want to put them on. If, if, if you can, later in the meeting or now, if you can answer the question, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Shea. Anyone else on the consent agenda? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, number G, what's a tank wagon? And uh, in the lawsuit with the police department on in, and uh, what's the other one? I thought there was a two of them in there. It was in, huh, can't find it. I, well, there's two of them about the police department, the lawsuit, that's all it is. Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else on the consent agenda? If not, Council, we need a motion. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Skoski. Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved and supported. With no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is a consideration item to consider approval of memorandums of understanding between the City of Sterling Heights and Local 1557 of the International Association of Firefighters, MAPE Supervisory Employees Union, and MAPE Technical Office Union. We have a presentation from City Manager Mark Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool. Mayor, if you don't mind, I'll uh, briefly summarize each of these three MOUs and then uh, be happy to address any questions there may be. 
the first MOU uh, pertains to uh, the CBA between the city and the fire union, and it provides uh, prior to this MOU that fire captains only are eligible for promotion to the rank of battalion chief. With the January 2020 retirement of a current battalion chief, there are no eligible, qualified, or interested fire captains to fill the vacancy. The city and fire union agree that in the absence of eligible and qualified fire captains, then lieutenants who meet the qualifications for promotion to battalion chief should be considered. But unfortunately, the CBA does not allow that to happen, so the memorandum of understanding before you this evening provides the language that would make that possible. Uh, so that is MOU number one. Uh, the second MOU uh, pertains to the city and the supervisory employee union group. Effective July 1, 2018, the duties and responsibilities for managing the offices of facilities maintenance and purchasing were combined under the job classification purchasing slash facilities maintenance manager. And that was uh, uh, codified, if you will, in the 2018 through the 2022 CBA between the city and this union. At that time, when the agreement was approved, the city was still at the planning phase for the $20 million investment uh, that's going to be starting up uh, very soon in all of our city center uh, campus facilities. It is also prior to the a recreation uh, community center being built across the street and the new DPW you know, facility as well. Over the course of the past 18 months, it has become apparent that the proper administration of the two offices is extremely taxing for one administrative officer. Although the facility upgrades alone merit significant time and attention, the scope of the facility's maintenance has expanded with exterior building maintenance taking on a greater focus including including seasonal snow removal and landscaping, which we talked about at a few meetings ago. In order to put city management in the best position to succeed in both of these critical operational areas, a decision has been made to divide the current purchasing facilities manager uh, position job classification back to the prior two, uh, which includes a position entitled facility maintenance director and a purchasing manager should be noted that historically the city has had these uh, two positions separate. In order to recognize the two administrative positions within the current CBA, the city met with the uh, Supervisory Employees Union to negotiate the MOU that's before you this evening. And accordingly, uh, the current uh, purchasing facilities maintenance manager, Jared Bodine, would assume the new classification of facility maintenance director and there would be a recruitment in 2020 for a new purchasing manager. Uh, so the union has signed the MOU and ratified it, and this is before you uh, for consideration this evening. And then the last MOU is between the city and the MAPE Technical Office Union, uh, and this pertains to full-time employees hired after July 1, 2015, uh, the current CBA provides a schedule of PTO or paid time off based upon a 37 and a half hour regular week. However, the union has three members who work a 40 hour uh, week, two of whom have been hired since the CBA took effect. In order to provide an equitable allocation of PTO to these employees working a 40 hour week, city union, the city and the union met and negotiated the MOU before you this evening which provides proportionally more time to those working a 40 hour week in comparison to those working the 37 and a half hour week. So for example, this would equate to four hours more PTO based on, on one year of service and increasing incrementally over the PTO years of service schedule. The provision of additional PTO for these employees working a 40 hour week is consistent with other bargaining units and, and their related CBAs. And with all of this in mind, uh, we are respectfully requesting that the Mayor and City Council approve the three MOUs that are before you this evening. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Vanderpool. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? If not, Council, we do have three suggested actions tonight. <coughs> anyone who'd like to make a motion? Mayor Taylor. 
Mrs. Schmidt. Resolved to approve the memorandum of understanding between the City of Sterling Heights and Local 1557 of the International Association of Firefighters, AKA Sterling Heights Firefighters Association, amending the 2018-2022 collective bargaining agreement to make qualified lieutenants eligible for promotion to the rank of captain. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? I think it was um, clearly explained to us. I have no issue with this at all. Council, anyone else? No. No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Suggested action number two. Anybody want to make that motion? Mayor Taylor. Uh, Mrs. Sorowski. Resolved to approve the memorandum of understanding between the City of Sterling Heights and MAPE Supervisory Employees Union amending the 2018 20 22 collective bargaining agreement to reflect the newly created facilities maintenance director and purchasing manager job classifications. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion on this item? No. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. I have several questions uh, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool. Uh, Mr. Vanderpool, uh, before 2018, these were separate positions in the budget? Mr. Correct. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, that's correct, Councilman Radke. Um, is there a difference in the pay now that we're separating them back again than what they were paid before 2018? Are they going to be paid more separate positions or are they being say, paid basically what they were going to be paid before the contract was amended in 2018 or created? Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Radke, the pay for the uh, facilities construction uh, director will be a higher level pay than the manager and that's outlined in the MOU. If you bear with me, I'll... Uh, turn to that page. Uh, the uh, salary for the purchasing manager, however, does not change. I guess I, my, my point is, and what I'm curious about, is we separate, we, we combine them to, I guess, save money. We found that it was not an efficient use. It's just too big of a job for one person. So we're separating them again. I just want to make sure that if we're separating them again, we're not suddenly raising the pay of one significantly over what we were paying to have two separate positions in 2017. Mr. Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Councilman Radke, the pay differential between a manager and a director in this particular case is approximately uh, $11,000. Uh, considering the scope of the uh, facilities, uh, $20 million in various upgrades at uh, City Center Campus, $20 million at the DPW facility, um, and uh, approximately $50 million in total with all the recreating recreation facility enhancements and the need, as we mentioned, for enhanced uh, uh, maintenance as well. We, we think the, um, uh, the change or upgrade to a director level for uh, that particular position is certainly warranted. I have one final question then. Um, how does this affect next year's budget in the sense that I know that we were, we were supposed to bring on more employees, hopefully, if we had the funds. Will we be cutting a different employee, or do we think we can find the money for this through other accounts, I guess. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Radke, it's a good question. Uh, the forthcoming uh, uh, budget is under development. Uh, we fully expect to have the position uh, funded uh, without the need to compromise any other positions or those that we might have been considering uh, above and beyond this. Uh, uh, and you will show all that and explain all that, and they'll certainly be highlighted during the budget hearings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Radke. Uh, Mrs. Zarko? Oh, yes. Um, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool, when will the a um, actual promotion take place? Is that tomorrow as far as the as um, Mr. Uh, Bedoin's um, becoming the um, director? Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Zarko, uh, that's a good question. Um, it's effective immediately, but we have to figure out the payroll period. So I'm not sure if it's effective tomorrow. It'd certainly be the next uh, uh, payroll. With respect to the purchasing manager, that's obviously going to take uh, uh, months to get through that recruitment process. And I have to say that I know that once the economy started turning around, one of our goals was to, to um, actually fill positions that at one time in this were um, combined. So I'm actually glad that we're, you know, we might have an additional employee on staff. So I think this is a good move. Nothing further. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Zarko. Anyone else? 
If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> or the third suggested action. Is there anyone who has a motion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Resolved to approve the memorandum of understanding between the City of Sterling Heights and, and MAPE Technical slash Office Union amending the 2018 to 2022 collective bargaining agreement to allot paid time off to employees working a 40 hour work week. Support. Been moved and supported. Is there any discussion on this item? I think it was well explained, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Council, anyone else? No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is to consider nominations to City of Sterling Heights boards and commissions. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? If not, this is a uh, planning commission opening. This has a mayoral power of appointment to a term ending June 30th, 2021. Uh, planning commission obviously is one of our most important boards and I have uh, a good idea on this, but I would appreciate the, uh, the next, this is a difficult time of year. Uh, with it being the holiday. So if we could postpone this to the, I think it's January 7th, 2020 council meeting, that would uh, definitely give me enough time to get a nomination on. So I would entertain a motion to postpone to the January 7th, 2020. So meeting. moved. Support's been moved and supported with no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That concludes that portion of our agenda and we will move on to uh, communications from citizens. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on any item not on tonight's agenda? On your cable channel, channel 10. Can you show more what's going on in the city than all the bids going in? It's all bid for this or bid for that. You know, show some action. What's it going to be built or what's not being built? Closing roads, something like that. And then plus two, 15 mile road, the railroad tracks. It's bad, real bad. It's gotta be uh, cleaned up. And uh, let's see what else. There was, oh, the ambulance service. Me and a friend of mine was arguing. He says, Warren is free. I said, from Sterling Heights, you gotta pay for it. So I'd like to know if we do pay for it. Because in Sterling Heights, we bought the ambulance we're paying for the crew. We get a discount if we have to go to the hospital? I'd like to know. That was it. And there was one more thing, but damn, I can't remember. Have a good one. Merry All Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas. Thank you, sir. Anyone else under communications from citizens? Mr. Shea? Yeah. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Good evening, mayors. City Council and residents. First, I want to say the front steps look really nice, and I like the changes over by between the city hall and the police station. It looks, it, they're looking good. And to get this in quick, I oppose the DIA millage going on the ballot if it's gonna if they're gonna pass it. I think it's just a waste of money. That's my opinion. So they're they're, they're still discussing that. I have a real concern. I was I voted for your safe street millage, the renewal. This is your fall 2019 magazine. I must have been asleep or something because I couldn't believe this when I read this. We're building a cricket field. It says the first ever cricket field in dog park. I like the dog park. If we're gonna build a cricket field, let's build a polo field too. Why, why? we don't play, I don't know who plays cricket. I definitely don't pay polo. How much is this gonna cost? I went on your park site trying to find this. It said it's gonna be in Delia, but it's not listed. Are we still gonna build it or is it canceled? That's crazy. I can't believe that you're building it. When I read it, I thought maybe it was a misprint, but I was told it wasn't. And regarding your site across the street, I, um, I never commented before, should have saved more trees there and across the street at the parking lot. Uh, we're by the senior building and um, back in October I did go in your building I had permission I took some pictures and stuff once I posted them man I I didn't open my email until last week I got emails from the contractor telling me if I step on the property or in the building again I will they'll call the police or get their attorneys a after me the guy gave me permission I didn't know I couldn't uh, post the pictures and I asked the one gentleman there, I said, what happened? He said, well, a city employee got really upset because I posted them 
and uh, they were getting so many calls regarding the swimming pool. I'm opposed to the swimming pool. I don't think it's a good idea, but I, I like the exercise equipment. I wouldn't have voted for that building. All we have is a bigger senior building with more rooms. I just think it's uh, going to be a complete waste of time. And I hope the general contractor spends more time building the building instead of looking after what I do. The building was supposed to be done in December. Now it's February 29th or maybe March. Who knows when it's going to get finished. I, um, I just hope um, we, have bells. we have bells in the building, but we don't have any whistles. I was, I was really in support of it before, but after what I found out and stuff, and after the attitude of some of the people, I find it to be a big waste of money. I don't think we're going to get our bank. I'd never go in a senior building, and I don't think I'm going to be using the new community center that much neither. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Anyone else? Mr. Jefferson? <clears throat> Sterling Heights. Uh, even though I'm injured, I still made it down here. That's just for those poor folks on uh, social media. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we almost had the old Jerry back there. Almost had him back. Uh, uh, Mr. Vanderpool, could you tell us the, the hours, the approximate hours that the um, community center is going to be open? Uh, I, I believe that's important for a, a number of reasons for uh, the people in the, this here community. Also, Mr. Vanderpool, we got those steps out front. As I mentioned, I am injured. Is there going to be handrails on that thing? Because it seems like down the middle could be some handrails. Uh, another thing with the social media outlets, Mr. Vanderpool, uh, there's been some discussion about what's going to happen to the the senior center once the community center is is open could you uh, uh, go into some kind of explanation of what's going to happen with the senior center is it going to stay open is it going to close are they going to have later hours now earlier hours now could you explain that um i believe that's it for you mr vanderpool uh ms ziarko um can you explain to us if St. Blaise still has their um, collections going on for the less fortunate people that we have in this community like they always do? And can you tell us the, uh, the weeks that they're going to be open for the less fortunate people in this here community? Or if the rest of you got some kind of church or outlet for that, could you please let us know? That's another question, Ms. Yarko. Is the new community center in times like this? going to be open for the less fortunate people in our community uh, that might happen to be out in the cold. Uh, Mr. Yanez, um, I don't know if you noticed tonight, but there was two more firefighters hired. There was no colors and no women. Um, I don't know why you didn't ask that question. Are we getting to those folks because a few years back, it was a big push here for uh, the LGBT community, the colors. I don't know if we're offering those people positions or not, but this side was saying, hey, we are looking at the best people. That's who we want to hire. So I'm going to take that to off the table because I know you want to hire the best people, but are we really looking at the best people? Can you answer that question? Um, I believe that's it for tonight. And everyone else have a good holiday season, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Bye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Anyone else? If not, I'll close that portion and uh, go on to reports from city administration. Mr. Vanderpool, anything? Mayor, I can comment uh, quickly on some questions that came up. Uh, first, with respect to the equipment for chest compressions, the Lucas system, uh, we're purchasing five of those, so they'll be on our five frontline apparatus at each of our five stations. Uh, that is the plan for now where we don't have a plan to expand it, but that's not to say we wouldn't in the future. Uh, there was a question regarding tank wagon deliveries. Uh, that's a nomenclature used in the fuel delivery uh, industry. Uh, that is how we purchase our fuel. They typically come into delivery systems, either a uh, semi-truck type thing or more of a, what they refer to as a tank wagon. Uh, the good news with that, our net cost 
we don't have to pay taxes on a gallon of gas is approximately one dollar and sixty two cents so it's uh, quite reasonable based on uh, today's uh, fuel prices um, in addition a couple other comments that came up I will talk to our community relations director about uh, cable channel programming and we'll see what we can do to expand the lineup there with of course we do a lot more programming now on social media uh, which is become the preferred method of viewing uh, 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 city programming but uh, we will take another look at that the 15 mile railroad tracks we get a lot of complaints on that it's Conrail's authority unfortunately the city can't go in and tear that up however uh, we have made a formal request to Conrail for funding uh, we believe they will fund and fully improve that crossing in the next construction season. At least that's the preliminary information they have given us. Uh, there was a question regarding Warren ambulances and the fact that they may be free and you have to pay for ours. Well, first of all, the uh, city of Warren has a millage rate that's specifically uh, tied to their ambulances. I'm, I'm sure that they also bill their insurance companies. I'm not sure about that, but I'm... 90% certain they do. I'm, I would be surprised if they didn't. Uh, the city of Sterling Heights, uh, when we have an ambulance run, uh, we do bill insurance companies. Uh, that's Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance companies. Uh, so the uh, resident themselves do not have to pay unless there is no insurance. And then we also have a hardship case to consider for those uh, that may not have the ability to pay in those very uh, few cases. Um, there was a question regarding cricket. It's a very popular sport now. The city has been providing uh, cricket programming now for a number of years. The fields we use are um, overbooked. Uh, so this field by the dog park uh, will be certainly in high demand and undoubtedly a big success. With respect to trees on the city campus with all the new projects, uh, when the projects are completed, we will have planted hundreds of new trees uh, compared to uh, the number of trees on site before the projects. Uh, the handrails on the steps outside are on back order. We have a temporary rail on one side to meet the code and to provide uh, safe uh, traversing for uh, visitors. So the new rails, when they come in, will be installed uh, quickly. The senior center hours are not changing. The programming's not changing. If anything, we'll be able to expand some of the programming in the senior center. Uh, because uh, right now they're overbooked because of the high demand at the senior center. Uh, we do participate as a community, various churches with the warming cent center, uh, MCRES, which rotates around the county. I think next up it will be at St. Blaise. I'm not sure if it's uh, next week or the following week, but it's certainly coming up and it rotates um, across the county and certainly at various locations in Sterling Heights. Thank you, Mayor. All right, very comprehensive. Thank you, Mr. Vanderpool. Mr. Kaszubski, anything tonight? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Council, open it up for reports or new business. Anything? Mr. Mr. Yannis? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, in regards to the, the cricket field, I think um, it had to be at least 20 years ago. We were driving uh, down 15 Mile Road by Nelson Park in the fire truck, and quite often um, my colleagues at the fire department and I would lament about how when we were kids, we used to throw our ball glove on the, on the bike and grab our bat and we'd go and we'd play baseball all day and kids didn't do that anymore. As we're driving by Nelson Park, there's a bunch of kids out there playing ball at Nelson Park and we pulled the fire truck in and lo and behold, they were playing cricket. And uh, I'd never seen a cricket match before and this was at least 20 years ago. So people have been playing cricket in, here in Sterling Heights for a long time. Um, today I received an email um, and through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool, I, I apologize for not giving you a heads up on this, but. Uh, um, it's uh, an email from uh, Eagle, the uh, Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. Uh, they are starting a, a grant program, $1.5 million worth of grants, up to $150,000 for communities that have both curbside and drop off recycling. I know we've had some issues with uh, recycling, uh, so I'd certainly like to see the city apply for the grant. I will share this email with my colleagues. There is a webinar on the grant process that we can all uh, watch for free, so I will be sending that email out if you haven't already received it. Um, to uh, Mr. Jefferson's uh, um, uh, issue, um, it's unfortunate um, that we're getting very few applicants for both police and fire. You know, it's not just people of color, LGBTQ, we're just having a hard time getting people to apply, period. I think uh, City of Warren has something like 12 or 15 positions open right now that they can't fill in their fire department. Um, I have had conversations with Mr. Vanderpool about our hiring 
um, and I uh, also specifically about the LGBTQ uh, community. So we have talked about that, and that is on my radar, and I appreciate you bringing that up, sir. Um, and then uh, again, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool, I'd just like an update on what's going on with our Veterans Memorial. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Yenes, uh, as you know, that area between City Hall and police has been completely uh, reconstructed. The construction's still ongoing. All the monuments have been moved to a safe uh, enclosure uh, that the city has and will be uh, touched up and polished up some. And then uh, they will be reinstalled in a new location in that area, in that vicinity, I should say, which uh, I think the community will take great pride in. It'll be a much better display, it'll be lit, it'll be an area where people will want to congregate, and it will be done before the Memorial Day Parade. Great, thank you. Mrs. Arco. Thank you, Mayor Taylor. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna start out with some happy news, and we just did have Sterling Christmas, and I have to tell you, it was a great event, enjoyed by so many people in the community, and I know when I was leaving, and the park was still filled with people, and um, I happened to be with some friends, and they said, it looks like a Hallmark movie. I mean, how much better uh, you know, a compliment can you receive than just when you saw the activity and the kids skating, the fire pits going, the big uh, snow globe. It was a wonderful event. Can't thank the staff enough for all that they did to um, make it possible and certainly the residents for coming out and enjoying um, the evening with all of us because it was really, it was a very nice evening. Um, Mr. Jefferson, we're gonna go with some of the comments that you made tonight. First of all, um, I think Mr. Vanderpump might have been paying more attention in church than I was the other day because um, he remembers the dates of the warming <laughs> center at St. Blaise, and I, I couldn't remember if it was the week of January the 19th or, or uh, January the 26th, but it is at the um, end, of, um, end of January. Uh, but you can, I mean, there's always a need, and it's almost, it's like networking. If you have something or that you think somebody else can use, you can pick up the phone and call St. Blaise, you can pick up the phone and call Salvation Army. There, you know, and you can just drop off whatever you have. I go through closets on a regular basis and if I see a coat in the closet, I'm thinking it's not gonna keep anybody warm in the closet so I might as well take it where somebody can actually stay warm. So it's always a matter of networking. You know, there might be a need and then you find the source for whatever that need is. Um, lately, uh, I, uh, I work at uh, I volunteer at the Pope Francis Center, which is um, in downtown Detroit, and it's next to um, the Detroit uh, University of Detroit Law School, and and it's like in the basement of what is now Saints Peter and Paul Church. And I know that right now they have um, a campaign that's going on, and I can't remember. I think it's pfc.org, and you can um, for sale. And it was like if you buy a hat, um, it's like it's a Carhartt hat. You buy one and then Carhartt donates one to somebody that needs it. So there's always something going on like that. Um, at the um, Friends of um, Foster Kids, um, we, there was a need there for some of the things that, you know, um, it was clothing, jackets or whatever. We have one of the largest screen printing um, manufacturers in the city. Uh, made the connection there where they had a surplus and they took it to um, the uh, f uh, friends of uh, foster kids. So there's always something going on and it's like, it's almost like, um, I don't wanna say it's a job cause it's not. It really is just a good feeling to know that we can call people within the city that have, uh, are able to help other people, whether it be in the city or somewhere else. So that's pretty much how it's handled and, um, I know that St. Blaise will be looking for somebody to like, donations for food and um, certainly socks and um, hand warmers and toe warmers, all of those things. And, and those are just all the time. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zirko. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Radke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I'd like to wish everyone in Sterling Heights a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're not gonna see you again until the New Year, so I hope you and your family have a wonderful holiday. Uh, more than that, I wanted to answer a few questions the residents posed. I uh, second uh, my colleague, Mr. Yanez, on uh, trying to create a diverse fire department. I know this is in, gonna be in strategic planning this year, we've been talking about internally. We're working very hard to try to recruit both minority candidates, diversity candidates, and just trying to make the fire department look more like the community in which it serves. Uh, it's a complicated process, and 
lately we've not been having the applications that we'd like just generally. We're having to go out more and more. Uh, I guess public service doesn't appeal to people as much as it used to because we're having a lot of difficulty recruiting successful candidates. So that's something that we're really focused on internally. Um, to echo Mr. Vanderpool's comments on the railroad crossings, I had been contacted by several residents this year about trains that had blocked the 15 mile train track and I was unhappy to learn that the city can do nothing to prevent this or uh, make the trains move faster. They're actually governed under a federal trade rules. So if the trains and the tracks are bothering, you get to contact your member of Congress or your, or your Senator, you know, Gary Pierce or Debbie Stabenow now to talk with them about it. We have absolutely no authority and uh, a case in the Sixth Circuit actually said that cities cannot find them, move them along, urge them along. We have absolutely no authority to regulate uh, trains so there's that uh, with the cricket field uh, maybe surprising but I'm often surprised by uh, how much our recreation department goes out of its way to to serve the citizens here when I first ran for office I complained about the skate park I thought there'd be nobody using it it's a big waste of concrete and I have been amazed by how wrong I was I go out there on almost any day of the week when it's nice out and you'll have kids and Adults who act like kids, I guess, are <laughs> having a great time out there. You know, we won an award for it, and I, I am so happy that I was wrong because I thought it would be a big hole in the ground. Instead, it gets a tremendous amount of use from the community, and whenever I go out there and talk to people, we can still add a few more things, some more benches for people to sit at, and we're always doing continuous improvements here. But whenever I go out there and, and just, just talk to the people, they tell me it's an amazing skate park. They're so happy to have it. They use it all the time. And I know this year we actually instituted some... Um, some younger children's hours just to make sure everybody has a chance to really use the facility because when there's big kids and little kids out there, sometimes you don't want to have accidents happen and you want to make sure everybody has a chance to use the facilities. Um, I also wanted to commend Parks and Recreation for the excellent Sterling Christmas they had last week. It really was an amazing time. It, it's a special time of year and when you get to see so many of your fellow residents out there on the, uh, in front of the bonfires and on the carriage rides and the carousel, and even the, uh, the, the wonderful uh, ice skating rink we have now, it really is amazing. I think it gets bigger every year. <laughs> we keep on adding things to it, and it still gets busier and busier, so I know it's a great time. If you didn't come this year, hopefully you'll join us next year. And with that, um, Merry Christmas to my colleagues, Merry Christmas to the people at home, and I hope you have a wonderful new year. We'll see you after the holiday. Thank All you, right. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Radke. Mr. Thank Schmidt. You. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, I would like to say that I am thrilled with the um, entranceway to the city hall, the new entranceway. Um, the stairs, the steps are so much safer and wider and less steep and lit extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I couldn't be more pleased about that entranceway. Um, that being said, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool, um, the, the water construction project going on in 15 near Dodge Park, do we know how long that is gonna be impairing 15 mile mr vanderpool uh thank you mayor councilwoman schmidt can you refresh my memory 15 just today mm -hmm. some water main work is being done dodge so park. on 15 mile near dodge park i don't have the answer but i okay. will get it for you first thing in the morning okay no problem and also speaking of construction and intersections my favorite intersection moravian <laughs> and shaner um so it appears as though some improvements have been done in that intersection, albeit um, I don't think we did the construction because it's really not the best, I don't think. I, I'm so, it, maybe it's because it was at the end of the season and they're not finished, um, but there's no striping, so people still don't know that there's a left turn lane there. Are there going to be striping before? I mean, I know, I know my light's not coming till the spring, mm -hmm. but that intersection improvement does nothing without striping and instruction to the drivers. Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman Schmidt, I know this is uh, high on your list. I get updates on this almost daily. Um, the, the lanes will be installed yet this year, so we're told by the owner 
Um, so, you know, we're going to have to give them a drop dead date. And if we have to, we will go in and do the lanes and charge them accordingly. Well, I think the lanes have been, I, I don't mean the lanes, the, the lane marking, the lane marking, the lane markings yeah. is what I meant. In addition, the pile of concrete that's sitting out on the corner that will be removed, uh, within a matter of days, or we will remove it and charge the, uh, the owner of that site. The good news is we are dealing directly with the owner now and no longer his contractor. I know it's been slow going. It's been a very difficult project. Right, I, and I appreciate that. I just, I think, I'm, I'm hoping that the asphalt that they put down isn't the final product. And if you get a chance, maybe you could ride over there. <laughs> Take a look at it. And with that, I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, my colleagues, all the residents at home. Um, thank you for all you do, and uh, we will see you next year. Mrs. Sorowski. Okay, thank you, Mayor Taylor. So a couple of questions first to uh, through the chair to Mr. Vanderpool. We are going to be restoring the Veterans Memorials. Will there be a ceremony to when those are reinstalled, or are we going to just wait for Memorial Day weekend or week or whatever? Mr. Vanderpool. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Potem Sorowski, we will wait until the Memorial Day weekend. We need all that time. It's going to, we have to get all the landscaping in, we have to get lighting in. Um, so it's going to take us those spring months to get it done. But the big debut, including the mural, will be at the Memorial Day parade. Okay, very good. Thank you. I know that Mr. Adragna, who may created quite a few of those um, memorials, will be very thankful up in heaven for that. Um, he was a wonderful man. Um, to, to answer a couple of questions that were from the, the audience uh, to Mr. Jefferson, many churches do have, yes, that we, there's lots of collections, but how do the residents get them? You go, if anyone needs to go to, I know specifically I speak of Catholic churches, but I know all the other churches have societies that if you walked in as a person of need, they will find ways to help you. They will help you with both finances, clothing, food. If you ask, especially during the Christmas holiday season, it's, they, there are many avenues for that. So I know that St. Lawrence, my church, uh, does special collections and we collect every week at, at mass for both food and whatever people need. So if anyone is in need, please, if you even need to speak to somebody, you can call me, call another a member of council here, and we can help direct you to where you can receive whatever you may need at this time, even help with your bills. And then a special comment. Amazing, Mr. Radke was wrong about the skate park. I'm teasing you, Mr. Radke. I uh, see that skate park every day. I drive by it, and it is packed, even in the coldest of cold. And I'm talking about the concrete skate park, not the ice skating, although that has been wonderful as well. So I do think that that has been a great addition, and I am always happy to see how well our amenities are being used. Also, I'd like to co uh, commend Mr. Langloy for his award for being uh, for his park setup and management. He's receiving a statewide award, so that is wonderful. We, uh, as a city, we received an award last two years ago now for our parks, but this is an, an additional award just for Mr. Langloy. And then finally, to everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hug your families tight. Say a prayer for the troops. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Sorowski and Mrs. Koski. Thank you. This evening we heard that the uh, rec center is scheduled to open February 29th. So I have a question uh, through the chair to probably Mr. Vanderpool. Have we uh, done any hiring as far as the rec center uh, staffing is concerned or is this something that we'll be posting within the next few months? And if so, if someone is interested in a position, where would they find it? I'm assuming it would be on the website. And uh, an update, if Mr. Vanderpool, if you could give us an update regarding the status of the two remaining recycling centers. Uh, have we thought any more about uh, doing any staffing there? or are they scheduled to be closed? Or is that something that we're going to be talking about at our uh, strategic planning? And another request is when we have a closing of a road uh, example, uh, Councilman Schmidt's favorite intersection, mm -hmm. Shaner and Moravian Red Run. When work is being done by an owner, property owner, 
Can we maybe post the closing of a road on either channel five or 10 so that people are aware, uh, as an example, that particular intersection, road closed. Somebody coming in off of Red Run, Red Run turns to Moravian with the curve. If you come in off of 14 mile down Red Run, turn on to Moravian because it's the other part of the road, the road is closed. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a ticket. Mm -hmm. And that ticket is like about $132. So I think that we should kind of warn residents so that uh, they know that the road is closed, that they don't try to enter there. And also, I would like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right, thank you very much. Mrs. Koski, do you want uh, responses right now? You want no, to get back no. to him? Okay. Well, I just want to say again, thank you uh, to our Mayor Pro Tem for taking care of the <laughs> meeting for me in the very beginning so I could uh, spend a few moments watching my daughter sing tonight. We've all said uh, Merry Christmas to each other and to the residents and so I'd say it to my family, to your family, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever uh, you whatever you celebrate. As Mrs. Zarko says, we celebrate Christmas in our house. And to whatever you're celebrating, uh, make it a joyous season. And uh, we hope that uh, you have a very happy and healthy new year. And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved to support. So moved and supported. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.